Hello, kids. Richard Patrick of Filter is here. We're on Clark Street in front of Metro tonight. Filter headlining the final night of Cold Waves. It's car con carne. Let's eat in the car. It's car con carne. You've always been in that industrial orbit. Mm-hmm. Have you always been, what's the word, accepted by the industrial scene? It seems... Wow. I, I mean, uh, I don't know if we've ever been that accepted, but, I mean, industrial was like... So back in, like, you know, the 80s, when I was trying to get a record deal at the age of 17, um... They said, oh, you sound too much like, you know, New Wave or something mm-hmm. like that. And so I was really butthurt, and I was I was talking to my friend, and he was like, yeah, you should, maybe you should just listen to different music. And I was like, okay. And then my friend Dave Soleil came over, and he played me The Land of Rape and Honey by Ministry. And it was as if everything that I loved about The Clash had merged with everything that I loved about synthesizers <laughs> that had merged with everything that I loved about punk and it was it was industrial and then within 5 seconds he's like okay so those guys ministry are Al Jorgensen and Paul Barker who I just literally videoed on stage just playing a few minutes ago at the metro and I, then I got into, in 1987, I got into this record that I stumbled upon called You Goddamn Son of a Bitch by the Revolting Cox. And so I had really, really just adhered to this music. It was all like dance, but it was heavy and mean. And dark. And dark. And then I like really got into it and I was like drinking and smoking and like I ran into my buddy that told me you should listen to some new music and he he was like I've got a record contract what have, what has gotten into you <laughs> and I'm like all I listen to is skinny puppy and ministry and like the revolting <laughs> cocks and I don't care about anything I'm a total nihilist and uh, I hate fascism and blah. and he was like well fucking a dude come and join my band we're gonna go on tour it's called nine inch nails and that was it. And that was it. And for us to play on that tour, the Metro, was because there's there's records that like I grew up with, like the Greek theater, mm-hmm. like Neil Diamond talks about the Greek theater and Tree People. God bless you. I'm singing for you too. And then there's Red Rocks. You know, you two sure. playing Red Rocks, and all of my friends have gotten to play those places. And I have not been able to play those places, but I have been able to play the Metro. And that's like that's like three on my list, and I at least got to play one, and that was huge to me. And so I played the Metro back in 1989. I played the Metro in 1995 with, uh, with Filter. Then I played the Metro again in, in, in like 2006 with... Uh, army of anyone it feels like you would have played metro more but i guess you kind of you well blew, you blew up because than, after a short bus it was probably but, bigger venues. but i was playing stuff with q101 mm-hmm. and we were playing and like in like the one gig that we begged was to do the double door right and um and there were some other shows and we played the riviera which yeah. was another you know in case you didn't sh- feel like showing up which was the the minis- the other ministry movie that i mm-hmm. always wanted to do but talk about dangerous looking yeah yeah, and um, so it's it's a it's a crazy night to be here, and like I knew this was going to be off the chain, and I was really excited about it, and I can't actually wait to get on because I'm. We did a sound check today, and my voice felt like it was just the best it's ever felt in so long. So I'm just going to scream like a <laughs> motherfucker. That's what, that's what we're counting on. Yeah, that's what you do. Yeah, that's. It's it's. I feel really good, and I feel really excited to play. So. Well, we're excited to see you. And what's interesting, we are now. This is an anniversary year for Filter. Yeah. Title of record: twenty, 20 years, which seems unthinkable. Yeah. 
Uh, it's amazing. Now, this is a record you said uh, you barely survived making. Yes. Oh, I was fully drug-laden, just absolutely exploring the the realm of of addiction that I I mean I knew I was going to have to quit drinking and and using alcohol and drugs but I figured it's not as bad as it could be cuz I wasn't into crack and I wasn't into heroin and I was doing things like mushrooms and you know and other stuff so it was a bit mind expansiony kind of feeling um and I was in this massive relationship with Darcy from the Smashing Pumpkins. And that was a secret. And so much so that I just realized that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I was I was fully in this completely secret relationship with a girl that I was writing every song about and like, you know, I'm not the only one and and Skinny and just all this, just every time. Skinny's one of my favorite songs off that album. Thank you. Yeah, and um, just every single song was about her. And she's she's like, Rich. Someone told me I should get royalties. You you write about me so much, and you know it was just amazing. And you know they were playing like stadiums, and she would come in and like, you know, come to visit me, and like and like like you know secretly park her massive truck she always had an m like it's some massive f something because she's she has horses and yeah. a stable and everything and she's like you know parking the thing and like running over trees and shit and like coming up to see me you know what i mean and i just i i was like i can't believe that like arguably the hottest girl of the 90s is like my secret girlfriend and like i couldn't talk and it was just um I just felt really special and like I can't believe my life has turned into this thing of like you know I was you know I was really making it I was really making this amazing this this amazing a record that has stood the test of time and I mean I didn't know that it would but like I, I was just super glad to have been a part of the entire scene in general yeah whether it was industrial like we were talking about earlier or just you know just rubbing elbows with billy corrigan and trent and all these and all of this 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 life that i've been able to lead it's i've been insanely grateful that i've I've been considered a part of any music scene whether it's the 90s or whatever so i mean you know the fact that i'm back here at the metro is just insane right now i love it yeah it's really really crazy so what do you do on an anniversary year are you going to we're doing the whole record start to finish really yeah and then we're doing and then we're doing like maybe a half an hour of like the other you know the other songs from short bus and amalgamat and you know jurassic and can't you trip like i do and we'll we'll do like kind of like a, a a best of you know the past you know 15 years after that record and mm-hmm. before that record uh, or no 20 years 20, it's crazy 25 yeah 25 years of of making music and that's it for this this year you know and then next year i'm working on a record called they've got us right where they want us at each other's throats which is just about the trump administration and, and i'm i'm losing fans hand and fist because I'm just, I can't believe what's going on with our country. I can't believe, uh, I can't believe that you're not, not that you're not allowed. I can't believe that people won't allow you to question things. That's where we're at in history. We got canceled. Right. In El Paso, uh, In El Paso because I said I was going to bash on the president. I was going to, I was going to, not literally, but like I was, I was, I was going to pick on the president and like, you know, what? What? Well, and here's like, the thing. What they this, canceled us. This is know? a military like, town, but let the record show. Filter I, historically but, uh, supports the truth. I mean, the irony is we're, that we're military. We are so fucking military. Our one of our bass players joined the military after 9/11. Then we had some in the years following 9/11. Then we had. I've been to Iraq. I've been to Afghanistan. I've played 20 shows in Iraq during the surge, like during when they were at war. We were mortared in in, in Tikrit, and Tikrit we were in Kirkuk. We were mortared. We had a we had an attack in uh, Basra, Bagram Air Base, 
uh, a mortar came in. This sounds like you the know, kind of thing that would put everything in life in perspective. Uh, yeah, but I mean, the reality was is we were in an area where you could hear the combat, you could hear the the. You know, you could hear the, 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 the you know, they would, uh, there were constant, there were constant, like, just moments of, like, what? Mm-hmm. Like, filter hit the deck, you know, like, what? Like, you know, like, like, fully lying on the ground, like, you mean a real? And uh, a, a rocket, a one of these cheap, weird rockets that the Taliban would make would land, and it landed 100 feet from where we were sleeping. So this is this, and it didn't go off. It was a dud, but it was landed. And this is the kind of shit these guys. This is why I, I have such a massive appreciation for the military. But the reason why, like my grandfather, fought in one, two, and Korea. So he was in one as a courier. He was in two as like a, in the rear with the gear, but still like part of the you know the 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 engineering and stuff mm-hmm. like that that went with it and then three he was um he was he was all, all the way up to a colonel in korea wow. the reason why they fought was because i'm supposed to fucking bitch yeah. you're supposed to bitch and complain That's it. the pr- the protesting of uh being an american and and being upset at your country not hating the country trying to improve upon the country listen the only way you're going to do anything is to make complaints and to into better uh, the country is to is to protest and and so it's it's had a very costly effect on my band but i i feel like everyone should be fucking up in arms saying shit against you know i uh, there's 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 some celebrities that are never gonna fucking like say anything about it because they're worried about their record sales or you know their their streams and all mm-hmm. their so oh, I don't know I just it, that's what I learned from Ministry and Skinny Puppy and 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 the Revolting Cox and and the Clash and yeah. John Lennon and Bono and you know Joe Strummer and you know that that was the whole deal is to is to make the is to make the stink and 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 flip off people and you know and and be punk rock and get canceled i actually the the cancellation didn't even bother me number one you know we you know i got i got you know through the grapevine i heard that carl bernstein was like hey congratulations dude good job good on you you know like carl bernstein you know yeah, yeah. be his <laughs> his son max is a friend of ours got and, it okay and you know just just amazing little nods from pete berg the director and my brother robert and you know hey rich good job and you know get canceled and you know and that kind of stuff lets you know that you're on the right track and that's what mm-hmm. punk rock is all about and and industrial and the, all of it, it rock comes and ro- from rock and roll period rock and roll baby rock and rock and roll man you know what i mean so jumping uh, jumping from title of record was amalgamate where all the wheels came off i can think so amalgamate was like i'm f- trying to to stay afloat with my drug problem and I'd spent a ton of money on the record and it didn't it didn't connect to me as much as I wanted it to internally even though it's a fucking great record it really is like the the, the huge missed opportunity of of the only way is the wrong way not getting the the push to radio yeah. because that would have been a massive hit for us but i was so sick from being on booze and and drugs that i had to i had to cancel the entire tour and just as the record came out and i went into rehab and, and it was worse timing but mm-hmm. there's never a good time to get of sober of course you know? but I'm sober and I'm alive and I really wish like I could somehow re-release that as a single or something and and put it out again 2023 maybe maybe 2023 yeah is that right yeah it was 2003 right yeah maybe it could come out maybe I could redo it or something it's you know um but yeah I mean you know I also have I have uh, music that I'm doing right now that I think is great. So you know, you never really, you never really give up on anything. You know, 
I, I want to jump around a little bit. Staying on the addiction topic for a moment, you're playing Cold Waves. This whole four-day festival is built upon the need to take care of people who may think there's nowhere left to go. Service mm-hmm. industry people, certainly musicians. As someone who's been through all that dark shit, as yeah. someone who's come through the other side, what does it mean to play something like this? Above and beyond doing a headlining yeah. filter show, <clears throat> there, there's some heft to this. The the biggest, most important thing that I've ever been a part of is recovery. And every few days, I'll answer an email, whether it's on Facebook or it's at social media in general, and it'll be a person crying out for help saying, how did you do it? And I, say, and I just say the same thing. I said, dude, you got to believe in yourself. But let me tell you, if I can do it, you can do it. And giving back to the to the world especially all those alcoholics and drug addicts that are out there it's completely possible to get sober sure and that's what people and it's never it's never an option suicide is never an option because we are on this tiny little ball and we're just conscious enough to know that our life on this tiny little planet is finite and this is it we all won the lottery when we when our moms got pregnant Uh we won the lottery on trillions of different sperm and several different eggs that we could have ended up being and here we are we're conscious and we're and we're around and this is it this is it, baby. We got one chance to live on this planet and be alive. And don't give up because it's, uh, uh, you know, it's hard. It's, 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 of course it's hard, but don't give up. Try to survive and try and understand where you are in this great, huge, amazing galaxy, this universe. And, you know, cosmos, baby. <laughs> Get into cosmos. Learn about your, your, your place in the universe. It's amazing. So, as much as we talked about your past, I do want to acknowledge you've been very prolific for the past ten years or so. I mean, mm-hmm. you've been really busy. In fact, I would say, Crazy Eyes three years ago. I mean, that's, I mean, that's a direct line to as we talk about this industrial through oh, line. Yeah. That's well, the newest record that I'm doing is fully. You can hear like you can hear ministry. You can hear like you can hear my my influences for sure. Um, the influences that made me who I am, but at the same time, um, it's there's some slow kind of trap beats that I'm mm-hmm. using, and you know I've always been a little bit of like uh, I like the, the like the Clash was like hey we're gonna do rap we're gonna do you know reggae we're gonna do punk we're gonna do and it was kind of like. That was kind of where I came from. Yeah. Like, yeah, Santa I'm Nista's do, bonkers. Yeah. It's all over the place. I want to do take a picture. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I want to make that luscious, gooey, gorgeous guitar sound that, like, The Edge would do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I still have, you know, uh, I still have a softer side. I still like doing falsetto, even though I can scream. You know, mm-hmm. like, so... I think it's important to, to, to kind of explore those sounds, but I am getting angrier and angrier yeah. in, in kind of, I think it's, it's like this, this new record that I'm doing, they got us right where they want us at each other's throats. It's the first time I'm like fucking swearing in every song. Like I'm, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to swear more. It's not some calculation. Yeah. It's just, just pouring at out of you. some point like a motherfucker is gonna you know what i mean you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna fucking swear during this administration this this fucking crazy ass shit so i don't know but yeah it's a lot of fun and i and i i constant and i do the other thing is is you know you got to have a side hustle in this town in this and that's town. why you're a lift driver <laughs> no, I'm not a Lyft driver, but I do do movie scores. I love Makes doing film sense. scores, and and that we first heard Filter on a movie soundtrack. Like, yeah, I mean, you, you, it's th- it's it's always lent itself to being extremely um, 
cinematic. Yeah. So I've met some great directors, and they're just like, "Yo, dude, I've already tempted in. Hey, man, nice shot to this movie. You know, I'm 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 I'm, I'm working on this movie. Uh, it's called um, Irene's uh, Garden, and it stars Ryan Phillippe." And, uh, you know, the director's like, I've already tempted in, hey man, nice shot. I'm like, yeah, dude, no, we're not going to do hey man, nice shot again. We're going to do this song. Like, what do Good. you think of this song? He's like, oh my God, it's even better. You know, so it's it's great. I'm like, oh, okay, so you just want some straight up old school, like filter kind of vibe. He's like, yeah. I'm like okay because I've been learning. I've been learning. That. I've been learning how to score for the past like four years. So like you know, it makes total sense. Yeah, like, that that sense of drama you convey in your writing that totally lends itself to film. Yeah, it's 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 fun as shit. That's all I know. It's it's super fun. So. Now you are headlining. If you're watching this on Facebook Live, Filter is headlining Metro tonight. I don't want to take up too much more of your time because you have to get ready to perform. Um, yeah, you're talking about new music. Is the Pledge Music album, is that just going to be like your Prince Black album? Is that just on a shelf now? That's, so Brian Lee's gang, who is just missing in action, he's just this guy that is just, he, rumor has it, he's in London. Okay. And he's with his buddy Tom Body, and, and um, you know, he, it just, he's one of these guys, he just, I guess he just doesn't want it as much as I did and I I love him and uh, a lot of history uh, I hope he's okay I hope he's okay seriously um, so I took the songs from Rebus and I just incorporated them okay, into that's what I was kind of wondering because I can't truly finish the record if Brian's not around and he's just never around he's just this guy that's like you know, he's done three records in his career, and I've done, like, eight. And and I, I, I try and pump out as much music as I can, and I like to work really fast. You know, gosh, there was a time when Title of Record took four years to make. Yeah. And a lot of that was because, Brian, what are you doing? Are we going to get together? Are we going to work? And, and then he left, and I had to kind of rethink where I was in music. And then I worked with Ray DeLeo, and I worked with uh, Gino a little bit on mm -hmm. that record. And But I've really had to kind of step it up and learn how to just be on my own. And, you know, I, I got away from the computer a, a lot during the last 20 years. But this last four years, I have just dove into the studio. Like, I have just... I've become a whiz at uh, You've taught yourself how to do stuff. Logic Pro X, mm -hmm. and I just won't rely on anyone. I just go in there by myself. My studio is so fucking decked out. I, you know, I started. It's very humble. You'll see on Instagram, like, okay, here's my laptop, and then here's my desktop, and then here's my, you know, I brought some guitars in from storage, and then now I got now it's too big for my house, and I'm moving it into this this commercial place, and. And now it's just like this, like laser lit. <laughs> There's just fucking vibe central, blue lights, and just all kinds of cool shit. And I just sit there by myself, and I I, I Facetime my friends and go like, "What are you doing? Help me with these lyrics." Or you know, like uh, that's what Brian Lee Gang was amazing at lyrics because mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of the music with him. He would send in tracks, and I would send in tracks, and then we would sit there and kind of work on them and. But he would do these great lyrics, so that's something I miss from Brian. But like he did write like three or four songs with me on this new album. And I think what you said, independent of music, I think that's where the world is at. I mean, we're all in the internet, in the technological age we're in, we're all kind of figuring out how to do the things we do on our own. I, I'm, doing yeah. a I'm doing a radio show in my car. I know, <laughs> I know. And it's a great idea. Thanks. You know, it's a great idea. It's a, yeah, the, you know, Little Pump, fucking put it on his fucking website it's you know soundcloud yeah and then it just went viral right you know billy eilish started it with her brother and they just put it on soundcloud you know and she's the biggest fucking it's like 37 million instagram followers for billy eilish uh -huh. she, the chick is fucking 18 at the most at 17 uh-huh like it's really truly amazing how how liberating it is to just people share 
it shares it share it's just like if, if if like you know it's just like when people word of mouth like when nine inch nails made it or word of mouth mm-hmm. when ministry made it or or filter or, yeah. or you know hey you got to check out this band hey you got to check out that but it's so instant and it's so that's it it's the immediacy yeah all right richard again i don't want to waste too much more of your time you've you're, you've got a show to headline tonight i do i gotta go play yeah we love your band we love you tonight at metro and then the title of record anniversary fuck yeah it's good to be here and i'll be back soon richard patrick go listen to some filter that's your homework